gonna talk about long tones, which is one of my favorite ways to start any practice session. We're gonna take our bow hold that we worked on in our previous lesson, and we're gonna put it on the A string, and we're just gonna take as long of a down bow as we can possibly manage. So we're gonna try and play with a really slow bow. And this can actually be easier if the bow goes down a little closer to the bridge. Closer to the bridge has more tension than closer to the fingerboard, and uh, it's gonna allow us to move the bow slower. So I'm gonna go maybe an inch from the bridge. I'm gonna relax my right shoulder, let all my arm weight bounce in the tension of the A string, and I'm gonna take a really slow down bow. Join me. I'm gonna go up without stopping. Trying to go as slow as I can. And the closer I get to the bridge, the more weight I can release into the bridge and the louder sound I can get. Your down and up bows may not be as long as mine, but let's do one more. And we want to listen for a smooth sound. The goal of this exercise is to try and get a really smooth, continuous sound that doesn't have a lot of swells or crescendos, or crescendos when you get louder. We want it to be as smooth and even as possible. And that's what's gonna train our muscles to play properly and with control. While you're practicing this, you can experiment with different bow placements and see what kind of sounds you get. If I place the bow up here at the end of the fingerboard, I'll have to move my bow quicker and it'll give me a different sound. Join me. I move the bow to sort of the middle area between the bridge and fingerboard, that's kind of like a good default location. Let's try once more going a little closer to the bridge and really letting our arm weight sink in. So I'm about an inch from the bridge Relaxing my shoulders, feeling the weight bounce in and out of the string. And I'll pull a couple down and ups. If you're making it all the way to the tip, we're gonna do something that's called pronating. Pronating literally just means turning in. So I'm gonna be turning my right arm in towards the cello, and as I approach the tip, I'm gonna do it a little bit more. It's kind of subtle, but that allows all of the arm weight we've been talking about to be directed all the way back to the tip. So there's a little bit, like at the frog, my hand might actually look pretty sort of perpendicular to the stick. But as I pronate towards the tip, I'll start to angle it in. Sometimes people end up with, uh, supinating with their bow hold. Supination is when you're turned out. And you'd actually, you don't want to play cello with a supinated bow hold because that sends all of your arm weight and all of your energy out towards the wall. And that does nothing to help us play the cello. So you want to keep it sort of perpendicular, the fingers perpendicular to the bow, 
or pronated to help you get all of the sound you can out of your arm weight. Let's do another couple long tones on the D string now. As I go to the tip, I want you to look at my right hand and look at the subtle pronation that I'm doing. And then as I approach the frog, it kind of straightens out a little bit. At this point, we really need to talk about having a straight bow. Um, if your bow is not straight, like let's say the tip is angled up, then when I pull a down bow, because of the angle of the hair, the bow will actually travel. That's what we say when the bow moves its placement on the string. So I have a pretty extreme angle here. The tip is really high, and as I pull the down bow, the bow will move up, it will travel in its bow placement. So by the time I get to the tip, I've ended up way up here, which is not a place that actually gives us a very good sound. If I keep the same angle though, on the up bow, it'll travel me right back to where I started. Bam. So if you have a crooked bow, Oftentimes people don't notice it if they're taking really short bows, like maybe just to the middle, because it keeps traveling right back to where you started. So it kind of feels like you're doing it right. But if you look at your bow during the long tone, if the bow is traveling, if it's traveling up, that means the tip is too high. And in order to bring the tip down, you actually need to pull your arm and your hand back. And that's what brings the tip back to an even. And when the tip is uh, parallel with the frog to the string, um, it won't travel when I play a down bow. If my tip is too low, let's say like this, then when I play a down bow, the bow will travel towards the bridge. And eventually, you'll actually just fall off the bridge. But uh, on the up bow, it'll travel right back. Again, it's not going to give you a very consistent sound, and you won't really have as much control over the sound you're making. So you want to bring that tip back up so it's parallel with the, with the frog, and then uh, the bow won't travel on our down and up bows. <laughs> Playing with a straight bow also requires a little bit of uh, adjustment with the fingers. I already mentioned pronation before, but um, the, the core thing to keep in mind is the angle of your hand at the frog is not the same angle that your hand will have at the tip. And so you want to sort of get used to observing your hand and seeing if there's any adjustment that needs to happen as you go from frog to tip. The main culprit in uh, having a, a, a slanted angle for your bow is usually your arm placement. If your arm is too extended, you'll have a, a high tip. And if your arm is too far back, you'll have a low tip. So ultimately, it's really about your arm placement. You could place the bow on the D string and just push your arm forward and backwards, and you'll see how much it affects the angle of the bow. Pushing it forward, pushing it backwards, pushing it forward. None of these angles are what we're gonna want when we play the cello. We wanna always have a straight bow. So you can start every practice session from now until forever with long tones, because it's a great way to relax, to breathe fully, and sort of get sort of a, a close relationship with the cello and work on your sound. I started practicing long tones when I was in high school, uh, when I got a new teacher, 
and they completely changed the whole, my whole approach to the instrument, and I still practice them to this day. Long tones are one of those never-ending um, explorations where you can always get uh, you know, deeper and, and get to know the sound of your instrument even better. Mm -hmm.